Could hidden parasites be fueling cancer in your body today? Discover the surprising connection and the steps that you can take to protect your health right now. Today, we are going to deep dive into a very often overlooked but critical health concern, the link between parasites and cancer. I know this topic is super icky, but it is really important because recent studies reveal compelling evidence that certain parasites may play a role in triggering or accelerating cancer development by creating inflammation, weakened immunity, and disrupting cellular health. In particular, parasitic infections are associated with these cancers. Brain cancer, colon cancer, assorted lymphomas, bladder cancer, lung cancer, adenocarcinomas. These are cancers that originate in the mucous glands of an organ like the lung, the stomach, the colon, the pancreas, and even the breasts. Gastrointestinal cancer, uterine cancers, leukemia, bile duct cancer, and I'm even gonna share with you a particular overwhelming virus that I've talked a lot about here on our channel that in combination with certain parasites can actually cause an explosion of cancerous cells in the body. I am really excited to dig more into this with you today. I'll break down the science between this connection. I'm going to explain the hidden invaders that could impact your health. And I'm also gonna share practical evidence-based strategies to help you protect yourself and your loved ones. This approach is relevant to both pediatric and adult cases. If you have been searching for answers for chronic health issues, or you want to take a preventative approach to cancer prevention, you're not gonna to wanna to miss any part of today's video. We know that parasitic infections weaken our immune system, and it sometimes is a cycle where a weakened immune system begets parasites that begets more infection. And this can be an assortment of infections, whether they are pathogenic or parasitic or viral or bacteria. Today, I'm talking only about parasitic infections. A parasitic infection is not something that you want to just not do anything about. Most importantly, for your knowledge in this video, parasites can cause DNA damage, which increases cellular and systemic inflammation, and they secrete toxic molecules. This is a trio that creates a very carcinogenic environment in your cells. The three types of parasites that cause an infection in humans are protozoas, helminths, and ectoparasites. And depending on what you read in terms of research and literature, the estimation is that anywhere between 30 to 80% of us have had or currently have a parasitic infection going on right now. And if you're wondering how you might be exposed to parasites, this is not just a second or third world problem. We have these problems in the first world countries as well, but you can be exposed through drinking water, food that's either contaminated or undercooked, mosquito bites, contaminated surfaces, unprotected sex, and contaminated soil. So this is really crazy. This is the first case I'm gonna share with you. It's a tapeworm. It's the H. nana tapeworm. What is crazy is the CDC has done a study on this, and what they've shown is that the tapeworm itself has cancer cells that then transfer into the human and become human tumors. The icky, icky part of it is that the, the tapeworm itself had cancer, and it passes that cancer to the host. And when the tumor was dissected, it shows the DNA of the tapeworm inside that tumor. <sighs> now, another example, waterborne parasites that are found in waters in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia are directly linked to causing bladder cancer. Blood and liver flukes are also related to cancers like colon cancer, gastrointestinal cancers, bile duct cancers, and adenocarcinomas like pancreatic, breast, colon, and lung cancers. Fluke worm infections are linked to specifically bile duct cancers. I'll share this with you. Many times when I've put folks on a parasitic protocol, they pass very commonly liver flukes, and they tend to be in that area of the bile duct. I find this next sequence of research extremely fascinating and absolutely critical especially in the world of brain cancer and causes of things like glioblastoma, 
which often is does not have a positive outcome. The Integrative oncologists have posted research that shows glioblastoma has a presence of spirochetes. Spirochetes are a particular type of parasite that comes from Lyme carrying ticks. So when a glioblastoma has been dissected, biopsied, and analyzed, they can see live parasites inside that tumor. And it is directly linked to a Lyme specific parasite. Now Lyme often is transferred to humans by ticks, tick bite, but that's not the only transference. And that's not for today's video. I have some other videos about Lyme disease. I'll post in the description box below where you can learn more about that. But just know a Lyme infection can both contain a bacteria and a parasite. And in the case of the glioblastoma, they discovered this one particular type of parasite in the brain cancer tumor. Now this is interesting. One particular study of colon cancer, and this is a mice based study shows a correlation of a particular type of parasite called the Cridosporidium parasite. This causes colon cancer. Parasites also have been found as a cofactor in HTLV one related T cell lymphomas. And this is really crazy. Research shows that a combination of an active Epstein-Barr virus infection paired with a parasitic infection can induce a particular lymphoma called Burkett lymphoma. And both that can be active Epstein-Barr or reactivated. And we know there are some common reactivations of Epstein-Barr that we've seen with the COVID ep epidemic. So I just wanna share that with everybody because this is really important that we take strides to be proactive in our health and wellness. Similar research shows parasitic protozoans invade and hijack cell pathways. And actually under normal cancer screenings, they resemble cancer cells within the body. Now the takeaway here is that not all cancers are going to be directly related to parasites, but just know that we may be misdiagnosing some of those cases that are parasitic specific. As I mentioned before, I know a lot of this sounds icky and it can actually make your skin crawl, but I want to share with you, it's really important not to guess and just kind of guesstimate that you might have parasites. And I have a very popular video that's kind of inspired today's video that shares multiple symptoms of a possible parasitic infection. But at the end of the day, I always recommend testing and not guessing. In my clinic, I use stool tests. So we can actually test for 17 different parasites and worms that fall into the category of all of the different parasitic clinical studies that show parasites cause cancer or part of the cancer causation. And there are a lot of different variables at play. It's not just the parasite that causes cancer, but it is the oxidative stress. It's the inflammatory factor. It's the stress. It's the damage that is done within the cell tissue and the toxins from the parasite that become this carcinogenic just bomb. So testing and not guessing is our first step. In this particular stool test, we test for a broad range of assorted microbiome factors like bacteria and fungus and candida and a whole bunch of things. But we also test for the parasites and worms. And so we get a bigger, broad picture of your microbiome so we can understand what's going on immune wise because your gut is a big factor for supporting your immunity and also limiting the inflammatory factor that a parasite or any type of pathogen can cause. Now on the flip side, if you do find out you have parasites, this particular protocol is what I recommend. This is the exact protocol I put my patients on and it is Biocedins BioClear Microbiome Detox. This is a removal, binding and restorative program. It covers everything from really eradicating those parasites and the worms, creating an environment they don't want to live in pH wise. And there's a lot of bitters in that very common parasitic reducers. And it also includes building up the microbiome with good probiotics that we know are needed to ward off parasites and worms. And it also has a binding agent that helps move things out. So that trio, that kit, and the stool test will be linked down below. So if you have any questions, and I'm sure you do, comment down below. My team and I will be answering those. If you have any more parasite related content topics you're interested in, let me know and I will be sure to post those here. I really wanna share this video with you because knowledge is power, especially in the world of cancer. And I work with cancer, that's how I got introduced to integrative medicine. I actually worked 
with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and an integrative medicine program there. And it's very important that we use all the different things in our arsenal, both clinical research, testing, and preventative and treatment plans to help eradicate parasites in our body so we limit our cancer exposure. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow, like, hit that subscribe bell. I can't wait to see you on our next video.